Welcome back, dears, to Singer Dad Reacts. Uh, great to be with you again. My name is Josh, and I am here to actually do a reaction to Sinful Passion. I know this is later on in 2018, and kind of out of sequence a little bit, but I had told you all that I was going to do Sinful Passion coming up, and then I realized that it was later in the year, and so I was going to just follow the sequence and until I got to it, but then I thought, you know, uh, these guys really deserve to have uh, this reaction because I got their hopes up uh, that I was going to watch it and react to it. And and then I kind of changed my mind and, and fell back into the sequence. So I'm going to go to the Lala sequence and uh, do this reaction. And then I will go and do, um, you should have uh, actually this and then uh, another one where Dimash and Rashan sing all by myself. So that one is coming right on the heels of this one. And then I probably will try to also do another uh, Lara Fabian reaction, uh, most likely Broken Vow, and also a reaction to um, a video of, at the end of the Bastille concert, there were some moments there with Dimash's parents, I believe. I wanna kinda get, you know, um, a reaction to that and watch that and see how that played out and the interaction he had with them. And a lot of you said that that was really a touching experience. So I want to take a look at that as well. So lots of Dimash coming up. I know I have been uh, not putting out as much lately. Uh, so I wanted to kind of get a bunch of those uh, out. Thank you all for your patience. And with that, I'm going to move on to uh, Sinful Passion. Now, I did a little research on this, and this song was originally written by, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, Begali Serkabayev, uh, who is a keyboardist for the band uh, A Studio out of Kazakhstan. And they wrote and performed this in 1998, from what I've researched here. So what I'll do at the end of this reaction is... I will go and um, I will do a reaction to the A Studio version of this song, and it will be available exclusively for my uh, patrons on my Patreon account. If you want to sign up for that and uh, actually see my reaction to the A Studio version of the song, I'll have that available, and I'm going to have more stuff like that available out there on my on my Patreon account uh, for those interested in getting some of that exclusive content. So with that, let me read through the lyrics here. So you appeared suddenly as if from a moonlit dream. Oh, if only you knew that I need you alone. The rain keeps pouring down. There were, in fact, some sleepless nights. You alone managed to light my heart up like spring. Give me, give me a slow burning fire in this misty weather. Give me, give me a burning flame made up of sinful passion day and night, eyelashes downcast at night, only to be surrounded by silence, forgotten sounds, hands, faces, but I only need you bewitched by you. I will devour this potion until the last remaining drop. The only one who is capable of possibly bringing me back is you, darling, back to return to the world from the abyss. Give me, give me a slow burning fire in this misty weather. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it repeats the chorus there. A burning flame of sinful passion that'll last day and night. Give me. So those are the lyrics. So it's really, it's definitely a love song here. Forgotten sounds. I, I assume the potion is some kind of a love potion that it's referring to there. Um, back to the return, back to return to the world from the abyss. Wow, it's pretty deep. A slow burning fire in this misty weather. You alone managed to light my heart up like spring. So that's, so there's definitely some imagery there. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing how the, the, the article I found that kind of talked about a studio said Dimash has reinvented sinful passion, a beautiful song from 1998. So I'm 
excited to see this performance. Now what I have done is I did some research and looked through all the comments to try to find the right version and it sounds like the right version based on the comments I saw from this particular version and also from uh, many of you is the version that has no glitch. So that's, that's the one I found here. So it's HD, no glitch, and it has the English subtitles in it. So that's the one that I'm going to use for this. So um, from, from Sochi, of course. So my background on this, as far as kind of this performance is that it happened in September, 2018. And it was part of, um, and Dimash was a guest at an, an international contest for young pop singers um, called New Wave in Sochi, Russia. So that's um, that's the information that I have on it. So, and you can see that on his little clipboard there, actually. So let's dive right in with it here. I'm excited. Uh, Хитом А студио грешная любовь. Впервые на новой волне. Прорыв года. Димаш Кудайбергенов. С песней грешная страсть. Если б знала ты, что мне нужна только ты одна. Сердце озарило, как весна Только ты одна That's pretty low for him, actually. No. So that's good. I, and I, from what you all have said, he's, he starts to really use more of his low lower register in some of these songs, and so that's good. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to hearing more of that. I believe only Pietra is the one I need to listen to, and that's from uh, 2019, from what I from what I researched. So I'm looking forward to to hearing that. I understand that's a good one to hear him kind of really sing some of those lower notes. But yeah, I believe this is the the actual writer of the song. I recognized him from some of the pictures of A Studio, uh, so that's cool that he's actually accompanying Dimash on this. So the, the lyrics I found are close. This is kind of what I find, right? The lyrics that I find are, are usually close, but they're not exactly what you see a lot of times on the subtitles. So like this, but only you alone lit up the heart in the cold like a spring. So similar to mine. Let me go back just a little bit here. Но в стуже сердце озарило, как весна, только ты одна. This is the most kind of like, I want to say baritone sounding ar arrangement or song that he's sung where he's really like, Bleh. he's really got that full kind of, you know, lower uh, baritone sounding fullness in his, in his voice, which I 
I suspected that he had, but he, the, the song, he just hadn't really sung a song that really called for that, for him to, to show that part of his voice. So this is, I'm loving this. This is awesome. Let me go back a little bit here. Ночью и днем скорать в костре крешной страсти. What he's doing right there is very hard because he's up in his head voice and he's singing really high for a male voice, but yet he's just really singing it quietly. That's really hard. I'm telling you now. Um, it's it's a lot easier, and you probably hear this from other vocal coaches, but it's a lot easier to sing when you're up in those upper registers if you're singing something louder than if you're singing something very quiet. And, and this is what you hear as a vocalist uh, from choir directors and voice teachers and those that kind of work with you. But that is, when you sing quiet, you still need to apply the energy and the passion behind the sound. So it can't just be quiet, but yet not have anything behind it. It has to be quiet, but yet have the energy, which is not necessarily the volume of the sound, the loudness, but it's this, this passion, this energy that you can feel that Dimash just exudes, right? I mean, that's part of why he's so loved because He's full of he's full of that energy and it comes out in everything that he sings. And so I'm gonna rewind this again real quick, sorry, to hear that again out of this these higher notes here. <laughs>
Okay, I think that's it. Because he held that a long time. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> so, first off, he did... That was an interesting little descant type thing that he did there. And I'm, I'm curious as to, like, what... Where the origins for that particular style. I know he, he's done different, like, um, cultural type runs and things like that from different nationalities different parts of the world right he likes to do stuff like that arabic i think and um middle uh, middle eastern you know different uh, different uh, styles so just curious if you guys could comment down below as to what style that was i'm going to listen to it again here and then i'm going to count how long this is because i believe you guys said it was like 24 seconds and i believe it because i didn't hear a breath through that whole thing and what i didn't realize when you guys were saying, oh, he held this for that long, is I, I kind of thought that it was like one note. Because it's one thing as a vocalist to just hold a single note. Kind of like what I did in uh, in Stars on my solo performances on my channel when I sang, uh, when I portrayed Javert on the stage and sang that final note in Stars. You know, I held that out for a while. But it's like, that's a single note. So to do what he did, that's much harder to move all around and he also changed volume anytime you're changing volume so your crescendo or decrescendo or you're doing softer and then louder you're you have to apply more energy more breath to the tone and when you go lower and higher same type of thing so that makes what he he did here even that much more impressive so <laughs> wow okay let me go back here just a little bit sorry I want to hear this, these runs he did real quick. It's almost like a yodel sounding thing, right? Slipping between his head voice and his chest voice. Счастья вам! Приезжайте в Казахстан! Мы вас любим очень! Димаш Кудайбергенов! Окей. Так. Вау. Это один из моих любимых, что он сделал. Because it really, in some ways, and this might surprise you, but in some ways it kind of reminds me of SOS because it shows 
a lot of the different textures and capabilities of his voice, right? I mean, you, really th you think about it, because SOS, he shows some of that lower register. When he does that little, um, that little run right there up into the stratosphere, right? Um, but he does even more of that here with kind of showing the fullness of his lower register. And then, of course, going really high and, and doing lots of runs up there. Um, and, and showing some of the, that unique characteristics that he can do with his voice. Like what I was pointing out there where, it, like I said, it almost seemed like kind of a yodel. Because it was just flipping in between the two registers um, for that little run he did. And then to do what he did there to, as far as showing his breath control. Uh, with the 24 second <laughs> and that's the thing again I I'm still flabbergasted by is the fact that he wasn't just holding a note he wasn't just like holding a note steady for 24 seconds that would be something amazing in itself he did all kinds of runs and changed the dynamics and yeah that that was crazy. At first, I was listening very, very closely to hear for a breath. Because one of the things that, that I've kind of learned how to do, that I was listening for to see if he was able to do, and sometimes they'll call it like a catch breath. And what it is, basically, if you're singing, la, uh, you can do a little kind of a, a little tiny breath there in between notes. And if you do it well enough, um, it won't get as noticed. Um, and sometimes you can get away with that uh, if you're really running out of breath and you need to kind of do a little a little quick catch breath. You learn how to kind of take in as much air as possible in a very short period of time. Um, and you can actually get a surprising amount of air in there if you, if you do it right. So I was kind of listening for that to see if he kind of did a little bit of, uh, of a catch breath to help him get through that phrase. But he didn't. He really didn't. And I'll have to go back and listen to that again. <laughs> Because that, wow, he continues to amaze me. And this is the other thing coming up that I'm going to be doing is his SOS from the Slavic Bazaar. So a lot of you have said that's one of your favorite actually performances of SOS. Um, sounds like above and beyond his singer performance. So I'm excited to see that as well um, from, from uh, 2018 also. Um, yeah, and, it, and again, it shows his character here, right? Um, what a humble, generous person he is. To, to take that time at the very end, instead of just kind of puffing himself up and being like, yeah, you know, check me out, I'm amazing and awesome, to kind of stop and say, thank you to A Studio. And he didn't just thank them for the song. He could have just easily kind of said, oh yeah, do a token thank you and kind of said, oh yeah, thanks for for writing this cool song that I was able to, to slay, right? He basically said, thank you for um, the music that you brought and the, the, the help that it provided to the youth, right? It gave the youth direction, I think is what he said. So this kind of shows to me the core of who Dimash is, right? And I've talked about it before in my other reactions. He's not just out there to to be successful or to show everyone how amazing he is or or whatever he's out there to really bring recognition to kazakhstan to um to show the value of the family which is part of his traditions from from kazakhstan and and also to to uh please his family right he's talked about that how important that is to him um that nothing more nothing matters more to him than to have his parents be proud and he never gets tired of that to see them pleased or, or have joy from his performances right so these are the things that are important to him and he doesn't just say those things and then not follow through or or uh, like that right you can see that he takes the time in this amazing moment when he's getting handed a dozen different bouquets of flowers to call recognition to Big Ali and the others of, of A Studio. So uh, props to Dimash, you know, he's just an amazing individual all around vocally as an artist. 
He put a lot of feeling into that performance, as he does with all of his performances. And yeah, this this is one of my favorites. And, and like I said, I really like to hear that the the lower part of his of his voice there really come out in richness and fullness, and more so than some of the other songs that he's sung. So that was that was really cool. Uh, so again, thank you so much. Uh, and like I said, if you want to see my reaction to the A Studio version, um, take a look out on my Patreon. You can find a, um, my channel out on Patreon at patreon.com slash singerdadreacts. I also do have um, Facebook, which is um, also Singer Dad Reacts, all one word. You can find it that way. I'll have it in the description down below, a link to that. And also my Instagram is Singer Dad React, so I'll have I'll links to those below. Um, and yeah, so more Dimash reactions coming. If you haven't already, if you could click on the subscribe and click the notifications bell so you can get notified of those reactions and, and others you may be interested in, I would greatly appreciate that. And as I've said before, um, I really love all of you and, and appreciate your support of my channel um, and your kind words in the comments and and the recommendations you've given me which have kind of guided me to know uh, which songs to react to and, and different details that I need to be made aware of so I appreciate that a lot and I really do hope that uh, you all are happy and healthy and that you're getting quality time with your family and loved ones take care <laughs>